So PLUS stands for people like us, um, which kind of falls into the theme of so a group of people who are like-minded or who have similar interests. So that sort of is what our store represents. Um, people who are interested in sneakers or streetwear or accessories or art or whatever that sort of lives in this secondary market. So it has some, some level of resale value um, that's like above the, the retail price it's listed at. So, um, so now we have two doors, um, one in Vancouver, that's more of a boutique style and uh, now newly opened one in Toronto that's a bit more of a mall type. But we also are working on our own in-house brand that represents that theme that I spoke about uh, previously. And, uh, and yeah, so, so yeah, we represent that space in Canada on the east and the west coast. You want to be somewhat famous and you have like ambitious goals. Yeah, I in your guess, life, but right? I'm, not, I'm not like fame's not the goal. It's like, yeah. you know, I just want to like do something I like that, like, you know. So I think sure. you are doing something you really think, enjoy right oh, now. Yes, oh, wow, you're right? It's wow. true, it's true. Oh, it. <laughs> what the heck? Okay. So yeah, so you're really doing something you really enjoy right now. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just wondering like how did it all start from just want to be, want to do something and actually get into an industry and start something. I went to visit an Ibrahim, uh, I think second year, second year of university. And then that was like, I think my first or second time in Vancouver. And then I, I, as a joke, we're like, oh man, like Vancouver doesn't really have a cool like consignment shop. We should open something. And like, it was not serious, right? Right. But like, like it just happened. It, I said, I said that, he's like, yo, I'm down if you're serious. And then we had a really serious talk that night. I remember, and I was like, super like, we were super like into it and like inspired by it. And like, I'm saying like a lot, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. And then we, I went back to Toronto and then I was just thinking about it a lot. And I hit him up again. I was like, hey, are you serious about this? And he's like, yeah, I'm serious. And then. We just started buying stock and kind of like went towards that route and and then it got to a point where we accumulated enough stock and and then we were looking for leases and it just kind of happened like by like almost fate like our regular location is uh the livestock right the it, old, the old the, livestock the original shop, right? the first livestock original. they ever opened right. that's the lease we took over we wanted to open near livestock because obviously livestock is famous in canada Right. in terms of sneaker shops. And we were just looking in the area and then it popped up. Mm -hmm. It popped up as I was looking in the area. I was like, oh, what is this? And then I was like, oh my God, livestock's like their lease is up, right? And so we took it and we're like, this is fate. We got to do this now. And then that's how we, that's how that happened. And then it was like, I always wanted to just open like, like a nice little shop and then right. like, expect to grow so fast. We're just looking for names that like aesthetically look good as well, as well as like had meaning behind it. And I think one day we just, we were just looking up words and I think I saw plus and, and then we're trying to put meaning into the word, right? Okay. And then I don't know if it was me, I think it was both of us. And, I, I built, we built off each other. So we were like, PLUS, um, us can just be us about, and I was like thinking about words for PL, and we're like people like us, because that's what we're, this is for, right? Like, it, it has double meaning, like people that like us, yes. like, like appreciate what we do, like that's one way to say it. And then there's people like us, so people that are similar to us, right? Yes. So that's, that was the main thing that we're going for. Like, hey, this is what we like. This is what we enjoy. Let's find more people like us. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, oh, wow. When, that, when we said that, it was just like, wow, yeah. that's good. <laughs> that's yeah, good, issue. right? That's, that's how that happened. So, I mean, Vancouver is obviously a smaller city. It was obviously like, it was a bit slower to start to, to build that network, but you know, we made a few key connections from day one. 
who um, who you know who, who helped us lock you know the store when we didn't have enough enough to display and and uh, people who are who I'm still you know friends with. So in regards to Vancouver, it's obviously a smaller community and one that's less established in, in regards to reselling at least. Um, I like Toronto being the bigger city, like there's obviously way more people into this stuff, right? So there's, there's way more people in this market that's competing against each other. That's like, you know, like it's buying and selling, right? And Vancouver is more of like, there's a few people that really do really seriously. And then everyone else is just like, just chilling and just like try and see if they can get stuff for retail. Maybe not even selling. Just, oh, everyone's keeping their stuff in Vancouver, really, right? People have like, it's more. There's a lot of. There's a bigger, like, discrepancy between like wealthy and like and like lower class, right? I mean, so there's like, there's a lot of like just super wealthy people in Vancouver that just don't care to pay, like that don't care to like pay a little bit more for shoes and stuff in Vancouver, right? Obviously, there's people like that here too, but, like. But there's just like, there's less like, there's definitely less hustlers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Out here there's, well, everyone's like, it's, it's like New York, right? New York is way even like 10 times more than Toronto, right? Like it's all just hustling. You know, you work it hard, you like, you make connections and you like get these shoes and you like flip them. Like it's so many people like that in Toronto and New York, right? It's, and it's like way less than Vancouver. More so, there, there are people that do that in Vancouver, and but there's there's so it's it's more controlled by like a smaller group, right? Right. And that's like that's a main that's a main difference I feel in you know, like in terms of like like this kind of like culture, like the reselling business, right? Obviously, it's frowned upon. A lot of like consignment shops are frowned upon, but like I think it's becoming more accepted. I remember back in the day, if you were inside a shop, it's just like, oh, these guys are, they take the stock and like make money off. Everyone else can't get their pair, blah, blah, blah. But now it's more like, it's a cool thing now. Yeah. Like LA, there's so many, not really a problem. I was expecting it to be good, but like, obviously now that we had our first day, it was, it's like really, it's crazy. It's actually really crazy. Um, yeah, I just I thought I was gonna do very well because like obviously this mall has like like that history of like just like everyone entering a Canadian market. Like a lot of stores that can like, enter a Canadian market, they'll open the first store here because it's it's obviously the best place to open in Canada, right? Yes. So we once we had that like we got that opportunity to do so, we had to jump on it. You know what I mean? Like this is not something that you you want to just like pass up, right? Like this is oh, like a once in a lifetime thing, right? So we're like, oh, um, like I'm saying like a lot, but <laughs> people like us, <laughs> people like yeah. us, people yeah, like us. Um, yeah, it's just no one, like no one given this opportunity, no one should ever pass this up, and especially at, at our age, like with our like we should be taking this kind of risk, right? Like, so we, we, we did, obviously we did it because we're here now. Yeah. And it just, it's actually way crazier than we thought. Like we need to buy so much more stock than I think we needed. And uh, that's, that's a good thing, which is yes. a good thing. It's going to be stressful, but it's, it's a good thing. And um, yeah, I think it's way better than we expected. My expectation was already good, obviously. I, I don't know how what you expect. Yeah, yeah it's for sure. I think and you put it pretty good, like we obviously we were expecting like good results, but I think the, the outcomes so far have been even better than expected. Yeah. And that's only the like the tip of the iceberg, like there's a lot more to come for sure. Yeah. This is where we're right now we're prob we're, we're not even we don't even have all their stock, right? So it's amazing that we achieved what we did this first day with like just like a, our minimal like like what we could get into the store in the time frame that we had and like 
the next month we're gonna like have access to maybe double our stock right now like like that's just we're gonna we should be able to do even better than now and that's crazy because i think right now is already way better i was just like high school the start of high school wasn't really into clothes maybe grade got into like middle of high school grade 10 grade 11 started falling into that stuff and then like like I didn't have any money, you know what I mean, for this kind of stuff, right? So I was like, man, I need to just like figure out how to make some money. Like, I, my parents never, like, they didn't, of course, like, as a traditional Chinese family, they didn't, they were like, no, you shouldn't be spending this much money on this thing, and stuff. I didn't have a cell phone until after I was 18. Like, my first cell phone was that, the one I bought myself after I turned 18. But yeah, I just, so I started a clothing line called Tamed. If you know yes. my Instagram, it's just T A M E D. And um, yeah, I just started making clothes to like, cause my parents are in the industry, right? So yeah. started making clothes and like selling it to some friends and it kind of like became like a, like, a, like a big thing in a small community. You know what I mean? Like the streetwear community back in, like, in Toronto, like 2010, 2011 and stuff. It, was not, it didn't exist. There's no, like it's just people wearing Jordans and like, like there's no street wear, you know what I mean? Like right. like all these like Japanese fashion brands, they didn't exist that nobody cared, nobody knew what those were like back in the day. Yeah. Like well our 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 age, like my age group, right? Like obviously maybe older people knew what well like original fake and like all these guys all these brands in Japan were because obviously it's an older market, right? Yes. Back in those days. But we all we knew were like like Jordans, you know what I mean? Jordans, that was it. That's there's no, there's nothing else. Yeah. It's just Michael Jordan yeah, need a and brand. maybe maybe some like sneakers, maybe some collabs that came out, mm -hmm. but like mostly just Jordans. Like I remember like the most most expensive stuff were like DBs and like yes. like even like some Jordans, some some retros that aren't worth anything right now, but worth like a lot back then. I remember, I remember. Uh, Jordan six carmines. Carmines before they retroed, they like eight hundred dollars yeah. before they retroed. It was like it was like that was the, yeah. that was a lot of money in two thousand ten. Like, yeah. like two thousand nine, the Kanye LVs dropped. Nobody bought them. They sit in the store, right? Eight hundred, yeah. nine hundred US, I think, and like nobody bought them. That's so much money for sneakers back then, right? Now people yeah. are paying one thousand dollars easily. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like that, that's a steal for one yeah, k. Yeah, I mean one k yeah. for a Grail is is, yeah. is a steal now. You know what I mean. And it's crazy and then I wasn't really into reselling I was into just making my own thing selling it and then using that money to buy stuff that I like right and then I got into the business going into essential yeah. I was like oh wow this is, like I get like when it started it wasn't really making any money like box was back then were like 300 bucks yes yeah we were like, like think, uh, there was no years, there's no customs yeah. there's, no, there's no custom fees and stuff so you you remember buying a hoodie for like 128 us and like flipping it and the conversion wasn't bad either right yeah. so you you sell you sell a hoodie for 300 bucks and you almost double your money right yeah so you're like wow well, i remember when we sold that 200 300 bucks we we're like wow we can make money and that's a 300 dollars now it's two thousand dollars yeah two thousand three thousand dollars for branding right and like you know now it's just like you can do whatever you want like imagine like opening a store like this back then it's impossible People be like, what are you talking about, right? Like, market is not ready. Exactly, the market's not ready for that. So, so I just like slowly got into that through through that store, and then once this, like once I got like gained that knowledge and figured out like the ins and outs of this business, like I, I like knew I kind of like fell on like hard times. I got like got into some some bad stuff, you know, and then I, and then this guy's like, yo, you need to stop, you need to get out of Toronto and do your own thing. And like, we opened the shop, we opened the shop and then everything else is history, I guess. Now this store is open, yeah. like in, in a matter of like a year and a little bit more, which is crazy to me. Yeah. Like Yorkdale, like if you told me Yorkdale, when we opened the first shop, yeah. I'd be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the first shop was already like, what the heck? Right? And yeah, that's how I got into it. I think this guy, 
was into streetwear way back too. He was, that's how I met him. So he, I met him because he bought my clothes yeah. that I made. Yeah, the tape. And then he used to talk to me all the time. He had a YouTube channel. I don't know if you researched him. He has a YouTube, he used to have a YouTube channel. He used to do outfits and stuff and like talk about clothes, mm -hmm. talk about, and he could have been big. Now those people that did the same thing that he was doing yeah. and were like probably like had a smaller following than he did are like huge now. There's a lot of like streetwear guys yes. that do cringy videos. I think it's cringy now, but like 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 the Supreme stuff, like I'll oh, spend twenty thousand Supreme, like just like <laughs> clickbait <laughs> clickbait videos on YouTube, right? Yes. Like I think but they're making so much money now, you know what I mean? Like yeah. like he could have been bigger than those people, honestly, but obviously it's like not really like a, I think not a really cool thing in the industry anymore, right? I think everyone's trying to like step away from that and do like something people would say is a real, a real like, I, I guess that's that's real, but I don't know, it's kind of been, it's, YouTube's culture has kind of been like really weird these days since like a lot of toxic stuff and like. I can't tell if it's real. Yeah, you can't tell if it's real. No, you, you watch anything, you can't tell if that's like, that is, is this just, is this content? Is this like real, like, is this just content? Or is this like real, right? Yeah, exactly. So he was making videos and he, he kind of just stepped away from that and got it and just focused on school. And like, he, he does a lot of other businesses and stuff. And then he reached out to me. In terms of like value, yeah. I think off way and whatever Virgil does is really, I think he really is being smart with like doing low numbers and like making things limited and like doing stuff people generally like and like appeal to a lot of, a lot of people. And like, I think he's doing really well. Everything's like, obviously you know as well, the market prices for a lot of his stuff yeah. goes up. Like Louis Vuitton also, has become much more relevant yes. remember before I just before he touched it too it was, it was getting relevant like with the Supreme collaboration mm -hmm. a lot of things happening and like but what he came in and you know and like it's just really talked about now in streetwear right like streetwear yeah. like wasn't Louis Vuitton like Louis Vuitton you didn't think streetwear he thought of a luxury brand and now like it's it's involved in everything you know what I mean and all their stuff is selling out like Louis like, and it's limited, yeah. right? Quotes, limited, limited. right? Yeah. yeah can, he's doing collabs with like Ikea. Yeah. He, they're selling out rugs and stuff now, you know what I mean? It's, I think that's like a top, like I think my top brand, like not, not even Off-White, it'd just be like Virgil as a brand, you know what I mean? Him, yeah. him as a brand. I think Kanye West will always be relevant. I don't think he's the most relevant right now, but I think Kanye West, West is really, as a name, just like will always be like, you know, like in history, like Nike's, what he did with Louis Vuitton, what he did with the, what he's doing with Adidas. He wants to be like the whole brand's like creative director now, right? So that's cool. I'm just thinking purely market right now. I think Travis Scott's really relevant right now. Mm -hmm. I think he's bringing really good value for a Jordan brand. Uh, if we're talking about clothes, I'm talk I'm branding people right now, right? Eh? I guess I guess it might be different for them. Right? So yeah, that's like the top three in my head. I can't think of like two others that are like really doing anything. Yeah, I mean, like I think mostly agree. in terms of people. In terms of people, I yeah. think there's a lot of brands. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Supreme will always be up there, right? But yeah, Supreme, yeah, Supreme, yeah. Yeah. obviously, like. Yeah. That might be even bigger than uh, both, of the, both of those guys. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, mostly agree. I guess the only thing to add, yeah, I, sh I generally think that like footwear is more exciting right now than streetwear or clothing. And that just might be because I've never fixated on footwear as much as I did before. But, but I think, yeah, there's like a lot more innovation in that, in that realm than there is clothing. I mean, maybe that's because there's just there's more room for that, but uh, but yeah. So for those reasons, like yeah, Nike, Adidas, especially like when they focus on like smaller releases or, or things like the Union, 
like Jordan ones or stuff like that to see how much effort is put into the, the branding of the entire experience, even the rollout of how, how they do like release the, the, the shoes and the boxes and the packaging and all that. It's, it's pretty exciting. I like to sell the clothes. I like to sell this stuff. I like, I like this interaction. I like seeing this happen, you know, like the store as a whole, the like interaction between customers, and like people understand, understanding streetwear and figuring it out. And like people actually like probably buy the, some, there's probably a lot of people that actually buy the first like streetwear thing from us. If you think about it, especially like now that we're in this, in, the, in like this market, so there's like a lot of first time shoppers in this market, like, like, cause they can see, they'll see, wow, this is cool. And then they, and then they'll talk to us and we'll talk to them and they'll, they'll, they'll actually like buy their first item, you know what I mean, from us. And like, maybe it's not like something crazy, but it's like their first step in the streamer. And I feel like that helps like the industry as a whole, right? And um, yeah, I did not, if, if anybody wanted to hear something from me, I'd be like, just, uh, just do it. I, is that, oh man, I feel like a Nike ad. Oh, that's so cringy. Maybe we should cut that. Maybe we'll cut that, but, but I, I don't know what you'll say. Like, yeah, I, mean, like, I don't care think, about this. Yeah. I'm not with any fans, but yeah, for people that might be interested in, in I guess, pursuing their own thing, be it a store or whatever it might be. Um, yeah, the same thing. I mean, just kind of, I feel just the most important thing is like to put in all the work yeah. and actually at, if, before you really sort of start, you know, sharing it and talking about like sort of what will happen after that happens, like as in like what will happen after you, you know, succeed. So I think the key thing is to just grind and really try to work hard to, to, to finish that thing or at least get it to a place where it's like it could become into fruition before kind of talking it into fruition because I think people yeah he's helped me a lot with that mm -hmm. I always like I always hype it up I always like oh man this can be great this yeah. will be so cool and then he'll be like let's just do it and he'll always yeah. like he'll, put, he'll take me back yes. into reality and, like, and you can't you have to find a middle ground exactly you exactly you so yeah so yeah that's a really good like energy exactly guys, exactly for sure it's a good partnership and helping each other and you know yeah. doing a business together yeah i think it's really it's important i it's think i think like i'll inspire him to like really really want to do something yeah. and like he'll like he'll like really like ground me into like taking it seriously more seriously and like focus more like i'm just i just I'll just get overhyped off for like, we could talk about one small thing and then I'll be like, oh man, that's crazy. This is gonna be crazy. This, this is gonna be the best thing in the world. And then like, I can't obviously think like that all the time. Like, it's still like, you know, I have to stay grounded and like, think, think clearly and like, organize it well, right? I just think about like, I, I, I tend to think about just like, like, all the fruits of our labor like immediately you know what i mean like oh right. man this would be great we're gonna like like sell so many things we're gonna like grow so fast and then i'll just, I'll just talk about that stuff way too much but yeah he'll well, he'll ground me and we'll, we'll he'll he'll put he'll really just like he built this yeah he's he's he, i was i was out there holding it down and then he really no, I think finding someone that you can, like, I think obviously everything Andy said, I appreciate and I agree with, but yeah. I mean, like, I think finding someone to that, it's like working with your friends is challenging, but um, understanding that like someone that is like super different to you um, can be like an asset, although challenging, like, I think it's good to have someone that's not like necessarily the exact same as you or feels or works the same way. Like, you know, just, I think that like leads to, to success. And I guess it's a regard. cool like ending though. It's like, yeah. we kind of stray away from the question, but no, we more talk about yeah. us. Yeah, that's cool. Right? That's good. That's cool. <laughs>